Many films feature unique stories within the science fiction and action genres, but a movie about a paralyzed man who cannot move his limbs stands out as uniquely compelling in science fiction. The story is packaged engagingly without overgone, allowing viewers to grasp the main character's emotions fully. Trust me, you will enjoy it if you watch it to the end. A mechanic, Ray Trace, fixes a car engine in his garage. After confirming that the engine is running, he grabs a beer and waits for his wife, Asha. Her self-driving car pulls up the driveway. Asha is happy to see her husband. Entering their home, they are welcomed by their AI Gray announces that he has finished his project and asks her to help him deliver the car to his client, pointing out that he will get lost if he attempts to use her self-driving car on the way back. Asha initially refuses but gets interested when Gray boasts about his client's home. The couple drives to a remote location near the ocean. They walk between two stone columns where the hidden path to the house is. Asha is impressed by its modern design. They meet Gray's client, Aaron Keane, a renowned tech innovator. Asha is excited to meet him, sharing that she works with Copa, a tech industry specializing in robotic limbs. Aaron shows them his latest work, a neural chip called STEM. But Gray needs to be addressed, believing humans are still better than artificial intelligence. On their way home, Asha and Gray become intimate while the self-driving car takes them home. However, Gray notices that the vehicle has taken a different route. Asha tries to redirect the car, but the system malfunctions. The car starts driving recklessly. Gray pushes Asha back, strapping her into a seatbelt just before the car crashes and turns. People outside witness the accident, but they do not approach. The AI announces that it has contacted emergency services to help. Four men approach the car, dragging them both out. Above, a police drone records the events. Gray is held down while one of the men threatens Asha and shoots her in the stomach. Then they shoot Gray in the back of his neck, leaving him paralyzed. Gray tries to encourage his wife, hoping to keep her conscious, but Asha takes her last breath. Three months later, Gray returns home in a wheelchair. The men had severed his spinal cord, leaving him a person with quadriplegia. New upgrades have been installed in his house to help him, while his mother Pamela often visits to care for him. Gray breaks down traumatized and grieving. At the police station, they meet Detective Cortez assigned to investigate the event, but they still haven't found the men who attacked them. His condition and inability to help get justice sink Gray into depression. He attempts an overdose that puts him back in the hospital. There, Aaron offers a stem implant that would reconnect his spinal cord to his body. Gray refuses, wanting his life to be over instead. Aaron asks him what Asha would have wanted before leaving. The thought makes Gray reconsider. In Aaron's home, Gray undergoes surgery to install stem into his spine. After the surgery, he goes through physical therapy. Here, Gray moves his hand for the first time in months. Soon after, he's able to walk and stand. The stem operation is successful. Gray signs a confidentiality agreement, preventing him from letting anyone else know. He continues his therapy in Aaron's home and is assured that he is still in control of his body, not stem. Back in his home, he enters in a wheelchair but stands up once the door is closed. He receives a package of evidence and reports left by Cortez. He looks through the files and watches the footage of the incident. Suddenly, he hears a voice. Gray thinks it's an intruder, but Stem introduces itself. Stem assures him that he hasn't gone insane, telling him that the chip is merely sending sound waves to his eardrum to communicate. Stem directs his attention to the footage, pointing out that the man who fired at Asha is not holding a gun. Stem also noticed that one of the other men had a tattoo on his wrist. With Gray's permission, Stum controls his hand to recreate the tattoo. Gray recognizes that it's a military tattoo, and Stum uses the numbers to access information about the man. Filled with sudden hope, Gray calls Cortez to give her the information, but Stum reminds him that he signed the confidentiality agreement, thus he cannot reveal how he got the information. Stum, Stum suggests that he Gray finds the suspect's apartment and breaks in. Inside, Stum instructs him to check the computer on the coffee table. He searches through the messages but finds no helpful information besides the local bar, Old Bones, being mentioned several times. While he's exploring the house, a car pulls up, and someone enters. Stum directs Gray to hide and attack the man, Cirque. But Gray hesitates. Cirque overpowers and pins him to the wall, where he recognizes Gray. Gray tries to fight him but is defeated. Stum asks for permission to help and Gray accepts. Under Stum's control, Gray gets the advantage over the fight. After Cirque pulls out a knife, Gray asks Stem to stop him. Stem takes the knife and kills Cirque. In shock, Gray vomits in the sink. Stem advises him to clean up any trace of his presence in the house, but Gray is still shocked at what he has done. Nervous, he asks Stem what he needs to do. Stem has recorded everything he touched in the house, making it easier for them to erase his fingerprints. 
Hours later, Cortez investigates Cirque's autopsy. The coroner found numerous implants in the body, including a gun implant on his arm. They also found engine grease on the front porch of his house. At Aaron's home, Aaron informs Gray that he can track him through STEM. Aaron scolds him that their operation should remain a secret and that his investigation might expose them. Gray retaliates that Aaron kept STEM's ability to communicate with him a secret. Aaron is dumbfounded at the news. Aaron insists that Gray shouldn't risk any activity that could put him and STEM in danger. Meanwhile, Cortez continues the investigation on Cirque. She finds drone footage showing Gray in his wheelchair near Cirque's house before the crime happened, but the system disregards Gray as a suspect, given that he has quadriplegia. Unsatisfied, Cortez visits Gray. She talks to him about his car, but Stubb notices that she checked his boots, alerting them that they left the print on Cirque's house. Cortez mentions Cirque's passing and sees footage of Gray in the area at the time of the assassination. Gray lies that he was trying to help the investigation but couldn't have done anything. Once she leaves, Gray tells Stem that he wants to find the people responsible for Asha's assassination, but he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Stem suggests going to the Old Bones but reminds Gray that Aaron will track him there and shut Stem down remotely. Despite this, Gray visits the Old Bones bar. Gray calls out to the people at the bar. He asked about Cirque but gets laughed at. A man named Tolan walks up to him and removes his earpiece. Gray admits that he's the one who took Cirque's life, injuring Tolan. Tolan takes him to the bathroom, bringing other men with them. Tolan starts stabbing him to check if he feels anything, ignoring Gray's questions. Gray gets his attention by pointing out the gun implant. Tolan finally admits to being there during the car crash. With Stump in control, Gray fights the men, knocking down the others. Gray pins Tolan down and interrogates him but he resists. Gray threatens him with a knife but can't bring himself to hurt the man. He permits Stem to do it with Gray looking away. After a while, Gray tells Stem to stop and recoils at seeing what it has done. Tolan finally tells him that the incident was a job. He gives him the name Fisk, but Tolan dies before he can speak more. From Tolan's injury, Gray sees a computer chip branded COBOT, the company where Asha used to work. Before he could let the information sink in, Stem informed him that Aaron was attempting to shut it down remotely. Stem instructs Gray to visit a nearby hacker to turn off Aaron's remote control. Gray arms himself as Stem instructs before leaving the bar. In a hurry, Gray leaves his wheelchair behind it and runs. Stem gives Gray a code to restrict Aaron's access as he nears the location. Gray begins to lose control of his limbs due to Stem shutting down. He hurriedly crawls up the stairs to the apartment. Back at the bar, Fisk, the man who ended Asha's life, accesses Tolan's memory through his implants. He gets Gray's following location. Fisk questions why the bartender didn't intervene in the fight, sneezing in his face. His sneeze delivers thousands of nanobots that the bartender inhales, ending the man's life. Gray finally reaches the hacker's apartment just as Stum completely shuts down. The hacker Jamie pulls him inside the room full of people playing VR she works on the code, but Fisk and his bodyguard arrive in the building. Jamie finishes the code and tells Gray to wait for the reboot. An alarm triggers, alerting Jamie that Fisk and the bodyguard are near. She packs up and leaves Gray behind. Outside, Aaron's security team arrives as well to collect Gray. Unable to move, Gray panics. He begins to gain control of one arm, which he uses to crawl. He stops, seeing a vision of Asha just allowing Gray to escape the two men. Fisk's bodyguard chases him while Fisk dispatches the security team from the elevator. Gray climbs up the fire escape, but the rooftop has no escape. Stum takes control, successfully using the bodyguard's implant against himself. Fisk finds the body, but Gray is no longer there. Gray returns home surprised to see Pamela there. Pamela asks about the operation, but Gray insists that no one else should know. Pamela is joyful that her son can walk again, but this doesn't comfort Gray. In his home, Aaron looks mournful and afraid. He needs access to STEM. Gray dreams about Asha sitting next to his bed. Cortez arrives, telling him they found his wheelchair near the old bones. Gray claims that he followed someone there but got into a fight with the person. Luckily, he was helped out by strangers who put him in a cab. During his story, Cortez slips her hand in Gray's coat. Gray admits that he wants to find the men responsible for Asha's death. Cortez reminds him that finding someone else to do it for him is easy. Gray dares her to scan his phone records to check. When Gray becomes emotional, Cortez and Pamela leave. Confused, Gray argues to Stem that they need to stop. Stem shuts its functions off, disabling Gray. Stem reveals that the code he gave the hacker gave it full autonomy, no longer requiring Gray's permission to act independently. Stem insists on finding Fist before he eliminates them. Stem takes control of Gray, arming him. Pamela sees him getting ready. Worried she asks him what he's done, but Gray doesn't respond. 
Listening from the transmitter in his coat, Cortez is in her car, taking notes. She hears Pamela say that Gray came home covered in blood and that he's currently armed. Cortez watches Gray drive out from his garage, and she follows him. While driving, Gray finds the listening device in his pocket. Stum missed it because it was an analog device. Gray throws the device out in the road. Cortez turns her police siren on, pursuing Gray. Hoping to lose her, Gray begins maneuvering around cars. But Cortez keeps up. Gray pushes another car onto hers, causing her to slow down. Seeing that they can't outrun her, Stum accesses a self-driving car, causing it to crash into Cortez's. Having lost Gray, she goes back to his home and interrogates a weeping Pamela. Gray finds Fisk in his house, holding him at gunpoint. Fisk recounts that he was a soldier who was injured in battle. Afterwards, he was used as a lab experimenter at Cobot. Fisk argues that his actions gave Gray an upgrade in life, becoming more robust than most. He offers Gray a position with his team, but Gray insists on knowing the truth. Fisk reveals that their job wasn't about Cobot, but to sever Gray's spine intentionally. Asha was just collateral. Injured, Gray fires his gun. Fisk evades and disarms him. The two men fight, seemingly equal with their upgrades. Stem alerts Gray about Fisk's nanobots, stopping him before he releases them. Stem needs clarification about how Fisk predicts his moves. Fisk finally has Gray pinned to the wall, aiming his armed hand at him. Gray comes up with an idea, realizing that Fisk is Sirk's brother. Gray taunts him by insulting his brother. Injured, Fisk punches him instead, allowing Gray to get the upper hand and eliminate him. Gray is troubled by what he's done. Stem urges him to continue finding the person who hired them. Listening to a phone recording, they hear Aaron's voice warning Fisk about him. Gray arrives at Aaron's house, efficiently eliminating his security team. A disheveled Aaron waits for him. Gray accuses him of orchestrating everything, which Aaron denies. Cortez arrives, holding Gray at gunpoint. Gray convinces Stem to throw away their gun, as Cortez ordered. She orders him to lie on the floor to handcuff him. Instead, Stem throws her off. Gray begs Stem not to hurt Cortez. He fights Stem's control despite Stem's warnings that it will break his mind. Holding Cortez by the neck, Gray begs her to use the taser on him. She does so, temporarily causing Stem to malfunction. Aaron points the gun at Gray, revealing that he's been controlled by Stem the entire time. Stem chose Gray to be his host and led Gray to kill Aaron, eliminating the only person who could create another Stem. In the process of rebooting, Stem confesses to Gray that it chose him because he is realizing he's been manipulated by the same thing that took his wife. Stem begins to talk via the house's AI system. He commands Aaron to put the gun down, but Stem can finally control Gray again, forcing him to eliminate Aaron. When Stem attempts to shoot Cortez, Gray fights back again. He forces his hand to aim the gun at his neck instead. He pulls the trigger. Gray wakes up in a hospital, still able to move his limbs. Scared, he calls for Stem, but it doesn't answer. Instead, Asha walks in alive and happy to see him. She tells him that he's been unconscious for two days after an accident. In disbelief, Gray tearfully stares at his wife. Back in Aaron's house, Stum has taken complete control of Gray's body. Gray's mind broke when he tried to fight Stum, allowing Stum to put his consciousness away and fully possess his body. Stum fires the gun at Cortez and leaves. Gray remains in the reality Stum made for him, happily reunited with his wife, while Stum leaves the scene in total control. The movie ends.